Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's welcome the senior pastor. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now put your hands together once more time for Jesus and for our worship team. Hallelujah. I would like to believe that when you are coming to church, I would like to believe that you would come knowing that the very moment you left home, the Spirit of God is ready to engage with you. I like to believe that you will believe in your spirit man. That even as you hit the gate and the stewards that are there are shaking your hands, the spirit of God is engaging with you. I would like to believe that as you come, every single moment, as we do intercessory time, you just plug into it. I would like to believe that even as the worship team begin to raise their voices, you shall not disconnect yourself, people of God. But you will know that God is about to minister to you. That you will not wait until the time when the minister comes with the word. Because if you do that, what happens is that you have already lost so much of God. How many of you believe that the spirit of God is in the house? You know, as they sung the song, blessed be the name of the Lord. Because he gave it and he takes it away. Every blessing that he pours on us, we just pour them back to him in praise. People of God, I know God is real. I said he's real. I said our God is real. Oh, and he loves you so much. And that's what is, it doesn't matter. It does not matter at all. Whatever is going on in your life, what matters most is that Jesus is alive. And he's alive in your life, in your situation, in my situation, in my circumstances. I give you praise and I give you honor. And that is why you will not allow anything to steal your joy. Don't allow anything to steal your joy. I want to appreciate some people that are not here in the house. Uh, you might not know. And those are what happens. Time is coming that I'm going to minister about the body of Christ. That we have several parts. And some of these parts are not visible. And sometimes you know that those parts that are not visible are the ones that when you touch a little bit, the whole body dies. You know the kidney. You know the heart. You know the brain. You know the pancreas. You know those little ones. Uh, there are some people right now, as I'm talking, they are at the basement. And for three consecutive days that we are meeting on Tuesdays and on Thursdays, when uh, the worship team were meeting here, and on Sunday, can you imagine? They came here at 10 o'clock and they are there working. I want us to appreciate them. They are not here. Appreciate them. Appreciate them. Now, I want you to make a loud noise so that they will hear there. They will be thinking what is going on. Make a joyful noise. Make a joyful noise. Hallelujah. Uh, these are Brother Sowin and uh, our Brother Francis. Uh, they are building some storage for us because all these equipment, we want to preserve them. And uh, the ones that we had were falling apart. And they need to be here when we have access to the building. And from Tuesday, they've been here from 7 o'clock till 10 o'clock. And on Thursday, from 7 to 10 o'clock. And today from 10, I don't know what time they will finish. We want to appreciate them. And I want to appreciate all of you. And also we want to appreciate our sister Mary. Our sister Mary is in the house. She has a bouncing baby girl. If you stand on your feet, Mary, for us to recognize you. Mary, mercy, mercy, sorry. 
Pastor Sister Mercy. God bless you. God bless you. Uh, as we said, when somebody is got a baby, she's a baby. Uh, I don't want to pray for her now because I know that uh, we, we've been praying for her and also she's going to have a time of dedication. Um, uh, we're going to go to her house soon, you know, because uh, uh, she's a British lady. So soon after she had a baby, she's already here. But we want to go and uh, see her as a family. And uh, as a family, when we go, we don't go empty-handed. Uh, if you want to bless our sister, feel free to do so. But because we've been giving a lot these days, I don't want to push anybody at all. What we're going to do is that we're going to go and bless our sister when the opportunity comes. Uh, this afternoon is an amazing afternoon. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. You know, uh, he's come with this sore throat that I'm even struggling to swallow my own saliva. But I know that all things work together for my good. You know all things. And for some reason, the, 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 today the, uh, the microphone is working very, very well. So I don't need to scream. I am continuing the message that I gave last week, Sunday. And uh, we spoke about the Christian that God respects. And uh, I mentioned quite a few people in the Bible that God actually respected them before because of the way they lived their lives. Uh, we spoke about David. We spoke about Job. We spoke about Enoch. We spoke about uh, uh, Samuel. We spoke about Abraham. And then we uh, dwelt on uh, Moses. And there were qualities in Moses that actually goes through all these people that we spoke about that made God respect them, made them gain the respect of God. And therefore, as we go through them last week, we mentioned about the meekness of Moses. In other words, the humility of Moses that earned him the res uh, 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 respect of God. You know, when the word of God is coming and anybody is by you and the person is sleeping, I give you or, uh, authority just to knock that person with your elbow. Uh, or if you can, you can uh, give them a holy slap. Don't sleep here. Hallelujah. Uh, a holy slap. You know, the Bible talks about holy kisses, isn't it? So that one is a holy slap. Because, you know, the enemy, what the enemy does is that uh, when you come to church, he doesn't want you to hear the word of God. In fact, uh, I think 2009, there was an article that was written. The enemy's desire is that you can come to church. It's okay for you to come to church. As long as you don't practice what you hear. It's okay for you to read the Bible, but as long as you don't practice it. It's okay for you to come to church, but as long as you sleep when the minister of God is preaching the word of God. So that you don't take anything home. But I know some of us are tired, of course. I know some people who just came from a, a night walk. And because they want to be here, you can see such people actually dozing away. Weekends are very, very busy. Some of you, uh, like me, I went to somebody's 80th birthday. I know somebody who went to that and then after that went to a funeral and that and went and went and went and the, the person is here. But you will rise up in your spirit, man, that you are not going to sleep because you don't want the enemy to do what? To steal what belongs to you. The Christian that God respected, and we saw that Moses earned the respect of God because he was meek. He was humble. He was a man who was faithful, number two. But I remember that when I was uh, teaching uh, last week, I didn't tell you about this, but in the course of my studies, uh, I look into this, and uh, can you hear them? I look into this and the word faithfulness, uh, the Greek word is called pistos, uh, P-I-S-T-O-S. And uh, that word has got so much for you to take home. That is someone that is reliable, someone that is true, authentic. You know, when somebody like Moses was true, was authentic, uh, he was trustworthy. 
uh, because of that, he earned the respect of God. Uh, he was dependable. Uh, God could depend on uh, Moses. And my prayer is that if you and I would like to be respected by God, please, I'm sorry, I put this fan here for me. If you and I want to be respected by God, then that quality that God is looking uh, from you is that you and I shall be dependable. Uh, Moses was devoted to God and the services of God. He was unswearing. If our English language has, we are blessed that the language has got so much meaning into this word pistos. That is a Greek word. And uh, he was constant. That is what uh, we, we learned uh, last week. And today, we're going to see some few qualities of Moses that my prayer is that if you don't just want to be an ordinary Christian, if you don't just want to be a Christian who just uh, uh, add to the numbers, then you are going to take uh, these qualities that you and I shall be a people that humble themselves. You and I are going to be a people that are going to be faithful unto God. But the next thing that uh, I want us to take home today is that Moses had a compassionate heart. Somebody say compassionate heart. Somebody say compassionate heart. Now, this is a quality that is lacking in the today's Christianity. Compassionate heart. Moses was leading the people of God, and he came to the time that uh, he has so much hard time with them. And uh, these are the people that God himself described them as stiff naked. They were stubborn people. And yet, the Bible says that Moses had compassion for them. And several times when God desired to destroy the people of Moses, the Bible says, the people of Israel, the Bible says, Moses stood in the gap for them. Moses stood in for them because of his compassion for them. And my prayer is that this afternoon, you shall have a compassionate heart. A heart that would desire to stand in the, the gap for the people. The Bible says that uh, Moses extended his hand and was asking God that God, I want you to forgive these people and remain their children. And God, I pray that until you make up your mind uh, that you take these ones to be your children and you forgive them, then even me, as I said to you last week, brought my name out of your book. That is how far Moses could go. The God, I want you to blot my name out. Because I know that at this time, you've made up your mind that you are going to destroy these people. But my prayer is that, forgive them. That you, O oh God, shall continue to be their father, their, their king. If not, my God, blot my name out of the book of life. To many of us, probably would have asked God, why don't you kill them now? I'm coming with a point. There's so much that is going on in our nation. There's so much that is going on in the world. God is looking for men and women with a compassionate heart. God is looking for men and women with a heart to stand in the gap. God is looking for men and women who will have a heart to say, God, have mercy in your wrath. God is looking for men and women who will say, God, have mercy of the Islam world. God is, is, is looking for men and women who will say, God, have mercy on IS. Oh, God, have mercy on men and women who are killing every day. But some of us will say, God, if this is what they are doing, I don't want to live with these people on the same street. Why don't you kill them right now? I am praying that every one of us will have a compassionate heart. You know, in the New Testament, the Bible describes us as a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. Now, the royal priesthood is what I want to dwell on right now. You know why he called you a royal priesthood? The priesthood of uh, God people are the people that stood in the gap. The priest stood before and between God 
to the people that God created. So the priest, what they do is that uh, they stood before God and they offer sin sacrifices unto the people. That is compassionate people that know the sin of the people. And they will go to God and uh, stand before God and say, God, forgive your people. They also stood between God, the righteous God, uh, and the sinful world. And therefore, as a people that God called us, uh, he says, a royal priesthood. Our role is that we shall stand before God on behalf of our family. We will stand before God on behalf of our community. We will stand before God on behalf of the world. We stand before him and we say, oh God, forgive them of their sin. We will stand between God and between them. We stand between him. And that is what the Bible says, the priest will go and sacrifice sin offering. And when they are going, the Bible says that they will put in their waist the, 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 the pomegranate. They will put in their waist uh, 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 symbols. They will put in their waist bells. Because they, like us, we are human who can sin. But the Bible says he has made you a royal priesthood. So they go into this holies of holies once a year. Oh, but blessed be the name for what Jesus did. I said, blessed be the name for what Jesus did. What Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. The Bible says that immediately the curtains in heaven turn apart. And therefore the Bible says uh, the holies of holies. Uh, we have entrance to the place as a priesthood of God. And we go there every day. We go there every moment. We go there every second. And therefore you build an altar of prayer in your house uh, as a people of God. And last week I said to you, listen to me people of God. God has been dealing with me in this weeks and days. Now, William, if there is no FICC, would this community miss you? If there is no you, would your community miss you? If there is no us, would this community feel it? Now, they will not feel it because we have not taken our priesthood stand. Our priesthood stand is to have that compassionate heart and we go to God every single day. And we go to God and we plead on behalf of our community, on behalf of our nations, on behalf of our families. Saints of God, I know without a doubt that in every family there is a Jesus. Oh, in every family there is a Jesus. And you are the Jesus in your family. And your responsibility. It doesn't matter what they are doing right now. It doesn't matter what is happening in your family right now. When I became a Christian, my number one priority is that every one of my family members come to know Jesus as his Savior and Lord. Not all of them are saved. But I believe right now over 95% of my family members are saved. Because you go on your knees and you pray for them. Oh, as an intercessor, as a priesthood. That you don't go there once a year. You go there every single day. And that's why as a church, our prayer meetings, we don't take it light. We come here every Tuesday. And I've seen the momentum building. Oh, I've seen the momentum building. And I know, and I know, and I know what God is saying. You and I have to do something about it. That this community must feel us. This community must feel us. When we come in as much as we pray for our needs, we pray for the community. And that is why I believe without a doubt, if you are going to come and we go as a priesthood of intercessors and we cry unto God, Felton must change. I was speaking to the caretaker, bless her, Yvonne. Yvonne was telling me this morning, he says, Pastor, you know, somebody has said that this area is very, very dangerous. You know, these boys come and they cause confusion. Is that the case? I said, well, I've lived here since 2004. I've heard about that. But we are here for a purpose. We are here to change that name that has been labeled to Feltham. 
we are here so that the name that is labeled to Feltham as a place where you cannot live. We are going to live here and they are going to enjoy with us. That is why on my street of Bandridge Road, oh, ever since I've lived there, I said, oh, there is no thief, there is no burglary that can enter my house because I know that I am the priesthood of Feltham. Hallelujah. You can say that you are a priesthood in the place that you live and you are going to have a, a compassionate heart as you see the people on the street, something to cause you to cry out unto God. God on their behalf, that oh God have mercy upon these young people. Moses had compassion for these ones. And the Bible says he earned the respect of God. May you earn the respect of God. I said, may you earn the respect of God. I said, may you earn the respect of God. And therefore, as you stand in the gap for your family, as you stand in the gap for, uh, as you stand in, in the gap for the community in this city. You know your God will change the situation. Oh, I said it will change the situation. But in the case of Moses, the Bible says, God even became angry with Moses. Because Moses will not let God. God is looking for men and women that are going to be tenacious, that are going to cry unto God. Listen, yes, the Bible says in the last days that I believe without a doubt we are in the last days. Kingdoms shall stand against kingdoms. Nations shall stand against nations. There shall be wars and rumors of war. There shall be killings. Oh, listen to me. But intercessors, priesthood. That is why I don't want to hear that, oh, pastor, I don't know how to pray. He says, you are a royal priesthood. All you need is a compassion. All you need is a God. Give me a heart for these people. Give me a heart for my family. If your family is not saved, they are not saved because you have decided not to pray for them. Oh, if you've been praying for them and they are not saved, are you going to stop? But you shall cry unto God. As I move on to other uh, 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 points that I have, you will know what is there. But you will not stop. And you say, my God, I know that from my ancestors. Oh God, they've been idol worshippers. But my God Almighty, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Oh, when uh, my auntie died and I went to Ghana, I don't know what I told you. Our great-grandfather who was an idol worshiper, who had an idol in the house that we saw and people were coming all over to come and consult in his house became a prayer meeting grounds. In his house, because majority of the family members are saved and because they are saved, Instead for them to pour libation, because that's what they do. After funeral, then they will pour libation and they will call all the ancestors. But come and see that the people that were gathered here, the family members began a praise and worship time. Because somebody began to pray and said, save this family, save this family. May the Lord save your family as you become an intercessor for your family. Because you want to go to heaven with them. That was Moses' mindset. And but when God became angry with Moses, in Numbers chapter 27, verse 15 through 7, God is angry with him, but he's not even, uh, uh, he's not bothered about it. He says, then Moses spoke to the Lord saying, let the Lord, the God of the spirit of all flesh, set a man over this congregation. God, I, I don't hear what you are saying. I want you to set a man over this congregation, the compassionate heart of Moses, who may go out before them and go in before them. That is, you will get somebody who will go out before them and he will come in before them, my God. That is my prayer. Oh, I hope somebody hear this. And may they lead them out and bring them in. God, you cannot leave them like that. I want you to do this. Get somebody for these stiff-necked people. Get somebody for these people that the enemy has blinded their eyes. Oh, I don't know. But when I am on the high street, it's not only on Saturdays, but when I, I am there, those of you who come on the high street, you see the pub? There is this one man, this one man. He is always sitting on the window. 
he's there on the window, permanently on the window, with his hands full of uh, rings uh, and everything. And I'm looking at him, and he's saying to the people, Yeah, am I? Look at me. And I know that this person is going to die, to go to hell. And I'm standing right by him, and I'm standing right at the window, and I'm crying to God, Oh God, have mercy. Oh God, have mercy. When you see the people coming on the street, uh, and you want to give them even the, 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 the truck, and some of them are looking at you. He says, I don't want this. Some of them ask, you are going to them. As soon as they, they know you are coming to them. And they will go to the opposite direction. But your prayer, my prayer, please don't give up on them. Please don't give up on them. Please cry unto God on their behalf. If there is anything that God is looking for, he is looking for the priesthood intercessors that will cry unto God on behalf of these people. Because you know, the enemy's desire is that he will take them to hell. But we want to depopulate hell. Oh no, you didn't hear this. We want to depopulate hell. And the only thing that you can do to depopulate hell is to go on your knees and pray on behalf of these people. That is, you are standing in the gap. You know how solicitors uh, uh, stand in the gap for us? You are standing in the gap as an adversary. And you are crying unto God. The Bible says, uh, uh, Moses, went on. he says, why? Moses had a reason. He says, that the congregation of the Lord may not be like a sheep who have no shepherd. These people... They have no shepherd, but you are there. I pray that the Lord will give you this compassionate heart. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 36, but when Jesus saw the multitude, oh, our greatest high priest, the one who sits in heaven right now, our greatest high priest, Jesus Christ, when he was on earth, the Bible says when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them. Our brother Emmanuel asks you to put your hands on your heart. I want you to do it right now, even now. That God, give me compassion for the lost. Lord, give me compassion for the lost souls. Lord, give me compassion for the people that I work with. Lord, give me this compassion. Because they were weary and scattered. Now, when you look at them, you will know that it is not their doing. How would somebody, there was one woman I met again. Her name is called Lukia. She's from Uganda. And this woman is always drinking. And I've met her on the high street for a couple of months now. And any time I meet her, she's forgotten about me. But I never meet her and allow her to go. I call her and I remind her who I, I, I am. And she'll remember now, she'll recall. But what causes Lukia to be that person who is drinking her head out? And that she was standing by me on Saturday. In fact, I don't think she had drunk in the morning. But the drunk or the drink that she drank the previous day was all over her. And whilst I was talking to her, I said, God, have mercy. She's weary. She's scattered. The enemy has stolen her. My God, have mercy. You meet these people every single day. The reason why you are going to earn the respect of God, that you are not going to, dis I mean, throw them away. You are not going to disown them. But you shall pray for them. If I, I've never met Lukia, and I said to her, why are you drinking? Why are you doing this? I show love to her. I even said to her, Lukia, I'm inviting you to church today. She says, I will come. And you know what she said to me? Make sure you come there too. Amen. And then she is not here. But when Jesus saw the multitude, she was moved with compassion. Because they were weary and scattered. And they are like sheep having no shepherd. But they have a shepherd. They have the God. The God who do not want any man to perish. 
the God who do not want any man to go to hell. People of God, hell is not meant for humanity. Hell is meant for the devil and his cut down angels. Hell is not meant for you. Hell is not meant for our friends and our families. But if you are going to be moved with compassion, and if you are going to pray for them, they will have a U-turn. Somebody say a U-turn. In the name of Jesus. Number four. I call this, if I perish, I perish Christian. The one that will earn the respect of God is the one who says in his heart or in her heart, I will do this. If I perish, I will perish. Moses had this attitude, had this quality. Even when he stood before God, he knew that God can relent. He knew that God can change his mind. Do you know why I know this? The Bible says that whatsoever we shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And therefore God is looking for you to act. God is looking for somebody who will say that uh, I will do this despite what. And we've been talking about Esther. The Bible says that uh, Haman wanted to kill and eradicate all the Jews from the surface of the earth because of Mordecai. And, and, and Mordecai did this, told and his niece Esther, who was then the queen. You know that story. Do you know that story? Oh, you don't know that story? Because you know that story, we are going on fast track. Now Esther is the king. It's, it's a queen. And Mordecai said to Esther, go and speak to the king. So that this thing will not come unto me and all your family that is here. And Esther was afraid because you cannot go to the, the, queen, the, the, the king's palace in front of the king if you are not invited. If you do that, you are going to face a firing squad. And uh, Esther was torn between what should I do? And Mordecai said, you must do this because if you don't, then the, you and your whole family is going to perish. And Esther said this to Mordecai. This is what I want to take. Esther chapter 4 verse 16. Go and gather all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. And I and my attendants will fast as you do. I love this, what Esther is doing, the queen herself. I met a pastor friend of mine, in fact, uh, he said to me about this minister who would declare a fast in uh, his church. We are fasting for 40 days and 40 nights. And this minister will never fast. He asked them to fast and he is at home eating. Esther said to Mordecai, I want you to go and tell my people to fast and pray for me. And I am going to pray and fast as well. Now this is very, very important. For you to think that everything else can happen by just prayer is a delusion. For you to think that, oh, I have prayed and nothing happened. Yes, nothing has happened because Jesus even said some of these things will not happen just by prayer, but by fasting and prayer. And therefore, Esther declared a fast and then she fasted also. I want people of God that are here, in as much as you want to see your family saved, in as much as you want to see this nation saved, in as much as you want to see this community saved, if you are going to come in a fasting and prayer, something can happen. Yeah. And the Bible says, when this is done, I will go to the king. Because I know, Esther knew that as people had begun to fast, oh, something will happen. You know, the Bible says, uh, and the angel of the Lord came to Daniel. Daniel, the very day that you prayed, your answers were released. Because your words were heard. 
but the princes of Persia. When the princes of Persia is holding on to anything, is holding on unto your prayer, is holding on unto the answers to prayer, my people, I want you to add fasting. And as you fast and pray, oh, something must give way. I said, something must give way. Because some of these things only would happen by fasting and prayer. And Esther said, and I will go to the king. And even if it is again the law, and even if I perish, I perish. That is what I want to sell for you today. That you and I are going to be that even if Christians, if I perish, I perish. Some of us, we are born again. Some of us will receive the benefit of being uh, protected from principalities and powers of darkness. We are enjoying that. We are enjoying the successes and the promotions. And we are saying to ourselves, as long as this thing is not hurting us. As long as it is not attacking my child. As long as my child is okay. As long as my job is secured, I will serve the Lord. I will come to church. As long as I have my mortgage paid, as long as I am progressing, but I am talking to people who will rise up in their spirit, man. For you to earn the respect of God, you need to come to that place. If I perish, I perish. I will do it for the sake of God. In fact, when uh, my bosses and my friends at work are maltreating me because I refuse to say yes or no to the situation, I find myself, I will say to myself, if I perish, I will perish and I will stand for the law. Like the three Hebrew boys, they saw the burning furnace. King Nebuchadnezzar has put it up. If you are not going to bow down to this image, you are going to die. And uh, he had uh, some people that will report to him anyway. And when uh, he got the report, the three Hebrew boys were brought to him. And the Bible says again, the three Hebrew boys in the book of Daniel, they say to King Nebuchadnezzar, King Nebuchadnezzar, We are not going to bow to this image because we know and we know our God is able to deliver us. But even if he is not going to deliver us, we are not going to bow to you. I am talking about the Christian that earned the respect of God. You don't serve God because God has given you a good job. You don't serve God because God has given you a good husband and wife. You don't serve God because God has given you children. You don't serve God because everything is going on okay. You serve God because you know and you know and you know. You are redeemer living. And you are persuaded that your redeemer is able to redeem you. King Nebuchadnezzar, we are not going to bow to you. Boss, even if you have to give me this job, And it is the only job that I need to get. And because I said I'm not going to bow to you. Because I said I'm not going to compromise to what you are negotiating. Oh, God will show forth. I said God will show forth. I said God will show forth. Once I was a child. Now I'm old. My hair is gone gray. I've never ever seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging for bread. You are not going to be the first person for God to go back to his word. God's word is forever and ever settled in heaven. Oh, it is settled in heaven. Oh, King Nebuchadnezzar, even if, hey, listen, I don't know, but I believe this because I know, uh, 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 you know, the oven that they used to. Uh, do bread. Here, they, they've got it so easy. They do bread in the house. You know where I come from? is a big oven at the, at, the, uh, uh, at the back of the house, somewhere. At the back, somewhere. It's, it's built with um, um, uh, clay. And when you go and see them put this firewood in it, and they heat it. They heat it, and they heat it. And all that they are doing is that they are going to put the, the flour inside so that it will become bread. And I've seen people taking the, the flour in there, and the heat that comes out of it. Oh! But this 
voice saw that the king Nebuchadnezzar said, I want you to hit it seven times so that they will see. And they were hitting it seven times. And they were hitting it seven times. The last time that I preached, I said this. Now the reason why God had to do something. What happened was that they saw that something was being heated. But they believed that God would never leave them. But what happened is that the Bible says when they were thrown into the fire. Immediately King Nebuchadnezzar was sitting down in his chair. And he saw that I've seen that I threw, I, 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 I've thrown, is that a word? I threw, oh, uh-huh. I threw three men into the fire. But I'm seeing another man. Another man. But this man looks like the son of God. Listen, the reason why God is going to jump into your situation is that you are going to have this tenacious attitude. If I perish, I perish. And therefore, if you say to yourself, if I perish, I perish, God is going to jump into your situation. God is going to be there for you. Oh, he will not leave you. Emmanuel said this. He says, oh my God, will never leave you nor forsake you. In the fire. He knows that you are in fire. Some of us are really in fire. And last week I said to you, the reason why you need, I'm coming to some point. Mm, I may not be able to touch that. But the reason why you and I have to celebrate and don't give up is the fact that God is with you. You know, because he is with you in the situation, you are not alone. You will jump and you say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory, your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the name. And that is why Jesus said this. I told you about this scripture in the book of Luke chapter 14. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, his wife and children, his brothers and sisters, yes, his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. This is if I perish I perish attitude that God demands from us. I'm not saying that go and hate your wife. I'm not saying that go and hate your brother. I'm not saying that go and hate your father. But you are saying that if there is anything that you will want me to do against the word of God, I am not going to. Because if I perish, I perish. Hey, if your husband said that because of this, don't come to this house again. I was listening to this guy. He said to me, he has a mate at work. And that guy is so blessed. And that guy does not want to hear about God. And that guy has told the wife that the very time that you do this church thing, You'll be out of this house. And the wife has stay put. I'm teaching this to a people of God who will say, if I perish, I perish. If I have to remain single until Jesus comes, I will remain single. If I have to remain single because this man is saying that I should not serve God, I will remain single. But if this man is not a Christian and you are a Christian, Paul says that you don't have to divorce this man. But the very time that he stands between you and your God, somebody should stand the ground and say, it, if I perish, I perish. Take your marriage. I am going to serve my God. And may the Lord bless that person. May the Lord honor that person. May the Lord promote that person. May the Lord live that person. Because the Lord is going to respect you. The Christian that earns the respect of God is that Christian 
who is going to be like Jesus, like Paul. Even in the book of Philippians, Paul said, but what thing were gained to me, those I counted lost for Christ. Yea, doubtless, I count all things lost for his excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I suffered loss and all things, and I do count them as dunk. In fact, some other version says, I count them as rubbish for the sake of Christ. Would you do this for the Lord? That I will count them as rubbish. That I may win Christ. Let that be your cry. That because I want to win Christ. Lord, help me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I will use five minutes to finish the last point. Which could be a sermon of itself. You know, the Christian that gains the respect of God is the Christian who is like a child. If you want to gain the respect of God, be like a child. Let me give you a scripture in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 3. And Jesus is speaking. I said, truly I say to you, Unless you repent, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Unless you repent, you change, turn about, and become like a little children. Trusting, lonely, loving, forgiving, you can never enter the kingdom of heaven at all. At all. The Christian that will gain the respect of God is the Christian that will have this attribute of a child. You know, children are trusting. They trust their parents. And I want you to trust God. I want you to believe in God. I want you to have faith in God. I want you to be able to rely on God. You know, I don't know about a child, but I know about these two children of mine. Especially when they were growing up. In fact, even if I promise them a helicopter, they will believe me. Our children trust every child believe that their parents are rich. And that's why they come out from school and they demand so much that you know you don't have. <laughs> but I want us to have this attitude of the child. Trust the Lord. Listen, trust that God can provide your needs. Trust that God can heal that sickness. Trust that God can give you that job. Trust that God can give you that compassionate heart. Trust that God is able to do what he says he will do. Trust God. No, they trusted us. You don't make promises that you can't give to your children. But you know what God said? Even you, the parent, you know how to give bread to your children. You know how to give bread and you don't give them stones. You know how to give them fish and you don't give them snake. How much more me? I am talking to people of God. And people that are going to be like children. And are going to trust God. And know that all resources come from him. He has everything. You know the, the grounds that you live on right now. The, uh, the earth. He created it. I sometimes sit down and I ask myself. So what is the foundation that he used to build this uh, uh, earth? <laughs> Think about it. And he built them all. He did not ask me how he should go about it. He never asked you. He doesn't have to consult you. When he made you, he doesn't have to consult you. And he says that, you know what he says in his word? I have engraved you in the palm of my hand. The Christian that earns the respect of God is the Christian who is going to be trusting God with everything. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he, God, shall direct your path. Listen, the fact that you fail today does not mean that God has forgotten about you. That is a platform to success. I said that is a platform to success. Because all things. When the enemy knows that you know this, he doesn't come playing with you. You know, I used to, I used to, listen, I used to cry. I cry about everything. I will tell you more about myself. I remember, this is just a bit of it. 
when Abigail was about three years old. Uh, forgive me if I become a bit emotional on this one. And uh, we've gone on the high street. And Abigail wanted ice cream. You know ice cream? Those ones in the van. <laughs> I'm sorry, Abby, but you need to hear this. And Abigail said, Daddy, can you buy me an ice cream? And in fact, I didn't have one pound. Not that I had some monies in my bank account. I didn't have money. And I look around and I look at my daughter. And I began to cry, God, why this? And my God Almighty came through and he said, William, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, mm, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. So I became a child that day. And I depended on the word of God. I trusted in the Lord. And the Lord has never, ever, has never, ever, has never, ever disappointed me and disappointed us. I'm telling you, listen to me in church. The Christian that earns the respect of God is not for you to earn mega money. It's not for you to get the best job in the world. It's part of the package. But that one that is going to be like a child and trust God in all your needs and trust God in all your mortgage. Listen, you will never be evicted from that house. Amen. Trust in the Lord. There's no time, so I will stop here. There's much more that I wanted to talk about. Being a child for God. Maybe the next time I will come. Stand on your feet, church, please. Worship team, why don't you come back?